So here we are in a lovely guest house in Stratford and we're looking at what appears on the outside to be damp rising up the wall and I was called in to have a look at this with a view to changing the electrical socket and as you can see we've got fairly classic dust and powdering and watermark. But before I was called in the damp proof company were consulted and their view was that all it needed doing was the bricks drilling and plugging after being injected with damp proof treatment the typical thing that you see in a number of buildings with two holes in every brick. That fortunately was total rubbish and a fairly cursory glance at this we'll see that the problem actually lay on the outside as all these problems do. And here we see the air brick and the worst the slope of the line and the rainwater running straight off down through that air brick and it can't even get away to the drain because that's also been blocked up. So there's a huge puddle of water generates here with the vast majority of it flowing under the air brick itself. We raise the floorboard, what we see is the two air brick holes and just look at the muck and debris that's in this hole that's been running through. And that blackness is actually dirt. It's not mortar, it's not gravel, it's not anything at all except the dirt that's been brought in with the rain. And as I go down, hopefully you'll see just how damp all this actually is. It's eaten the brickwork away and it's run down through those holes and taken out along the edge and then risen again through the wall structure. Now some years ago, two or three, I was told that this whole section of wall collapsed and so whoever came along and did it just put these little riser packers in under each of the floorboards to raise it up and you can see even along here several courses of brick the damp has actually gone up and penetrated those risers so again there was no attempt made to actually cure the problem itself and the problem here is very very simple water coming down through that air brick and running all the way down along the joist and the fix is also equally simple. It's to clear out some of the debris to allow the airflow and then lower that outside level so that the water doesn't run into it and there's a natural break along there. And then all this has got to dry out naturally and the subfloor has got to dry out naturally. And in fact the last thing you want to do is be putting any damp proofing paint or gloss paints or anything that's going to trap that damp in there that's got to dry out naturally. It's a gypsum based which is going to take a lot lot longer to dry. Could be all taken off, allowed to dry out the brickwork and then replastered when it's dry with gypsum or we could simply apply a lime mortar and again let it dry out naturally but never ever ever apply a damp proof paint to that surface because you'll just destroy the bricks as you can see, it's happening down here. Imagine all that moisture being trapped into that brick. It's just going to crumble away and go absolutely nowhere. So, very common. A very common mistake to be made by so-called professionals in the industry. No attempt to cure the original issue whatsoever. If they'd have done it outside, they may, may in time, this would have dried out because they'd have stopped any more moisture coming up. 
but all these floorboards would just continue to rot away underneath. So clear the air bricks, lower the level. And I don't know if you can see it, but now for the first time, now we've cleared the debris around. There's actual natural daylight coming into this hole from the outside world. This is all the soil that was scraped away, all the black stuff that you can see is soil. It's not hardcore, it's not base core, it's not mortar, it's just dirt. Dirt and water. And to just give you an indication of how bad the problem is, this was covered with a piece of moisture resistant chipboard, the green variety, and I'll show you the underside of that. And that coincides with this area here. And that was where the moisture was trying to evaporate and it actually was eating away at the bottom of a board that was specifically designed not to be eaten away. And the situation around the side doesn't get any better. All the way along the tarmac, up and over the air bricks. But here we have a secondary problem. You see that line? That's a line that's been caused by raindrops coming from that overhead soil stack. And water's been dripping off there, hitting this line, which is why it's clean, but the dust and everything then bounces up. And here, up the side, this is the top of the second course of damp roof. We can see that mud and dust has risen. And when that's wet, that will allow damp into the building. Second time. And a previous soil stack. It's no longer here. It's obviously leaking at some point. It's damaged a number of the bricks. Again, classically, put my finger right the way in there and check. So again, this is all cutting out, lowering of it. And here, just to conclude the issue, Despite the strong sunlight, hopefully you can see that's the height of the soil and there's the top of the blue brick. No more than a couple of inches difference between the two. And look at all that mud that's been splashed upon the wall, breaching the damp proofing. And here again. That is the air brick. Soil ingress in there. Covered. And again, soil build up here. And actually here, we've got foliage growing in the air brick, restricting the airflow foliage that's in front of us and what's growing underneath to virtually nothing at all. So all in all a very sick building that's just being killed simply by having soil on the ground too high to the air brick and not having natural flow. Very very simple cure, very very expensive problem.